<laughs> What's up, gang? Working on the uh, Doom 2.0, which is my Doom buggy sitting next to me. I got all my parts from my cohorts in the buggy groups. JD from GotBuggies.com hooked me up with some really awesome components like a brand new cylinder head, brand new piston, brand new cylinder, um, some really awesome performance parts, a camshaft, and a new throttle cable so I can hook up one of these cool Makuni style carbs to the buggy and get that throttle response that we want and hopefully max out some power out of the buggy. Also, Tom from k and Performance, or kidding me, uh, hooked me up with a lot of the components to get the 250 going again. Um, waiting for a starter and a solenoid because I cooked them, making a big oops. You know, jumped the gun, got a little too excited. Rookies. Anyway, we're going to uh, start putting this back together and I'm going to also use this as a lesson for my students on more engine components as I tear down the rest of the Doom. So, hang tight, follow along. All right, tearing this puppy down. Welcome to my tight, cozy little garage space. Um, for my students that have been following along with the engine components, we have the cylinder head off at the top of this engine. The cylinder head is the first part that we encountered with the camshaft on top and the valves. So next up, I gotta pull the cylinder. Sticking out of the cylinder is our timing chain keeps the engine running in proper time. And in the middle here, I got the piston. So I'm gonna slide this out. Now there was two dowel pins. For those who really wanna get into engine building, a dowel pin is a guide that slides in to a very specific spot on the engine so that when we install components, they all fit together precisely where they're supposed to and they fit tight. So you always gotta keep an eye out for these things because you have to put them back where they belong. So pop the dowel pins out. These are called my cylinder and head studs. They're gonna stay in there. I've already broken everything loose. I'm just gonna slide this out. I'm using one of my fancy snap-on trim tools to put a little leverage and not try to break anything on the casting. And that popped loose. Go down here, leverage. And that popped loose, all right. So now I only have to fight the piston rings that are inside the cylinder. And the cylinder will slide right out. I'm just going to be careful my chain doesn't fall inside the engine. Just slide right out. There we go. So, that's one of my timey chain guides right there. I can reuse that. And that is the cylinder. Not bad. Come on. I'll show you. This engine is actually not in bad shape. Cylinder's clean, no scores. A little bit of carbon buildup up in the top, and it's just showing its age. This thing's from 2006, so it's got a lot of time on it. But very clean cylinder, I'm kind of impressed. Zoom in on the piston there. And that's what we're gonna pop off next. So there's a little clip holding the piston on. We used to refer to them as Jesus clips because when they go flying, you go, Jesus, they're gone. And you gotta go looking for them. So, the size of the clip, pull it out. There it is. My uh, kit from JD came with new ones. Right. Next up, push the wrist pin out. The wrist pin is the pivot part of the piston. And as long as this isn't stuck, you'll be able to just fish it right out. Terrible. So right inside there, we got the wrist pin. If 
I can slide it up the rest of the way. The reason why it's so tight and not coming out is probably because it's warm. It definitely is. The bearing. Feel any sharp edges? So this is the connecting rod inside the engine. Attached to the crankshaft, the engine's at top dead center, so it should be sticking out as far as the point. And there's my piston. That here is a piston and the wrist pin. And you can definitely see the wear marks on the piston. Whoop, get back in here another. You can definitely see the wear marks on the piston. That's the underside of it. That's what it looks like. You got the holes in the sides for oil which lubricates the cylinder. And this piston isn't that bad. I don't see any damage on it. I mean, it's filthy, but piston rings are a little carboned up, not easy to spin. And that is definitely carboned up. That is filthy. A lot of years on this bad boy. Okay, so I called up my boy JD at gotbuggies.com. He sold me this amazing kit. It is a Naraku cylinder kit. Nice. And came with this gorgeous cast piston, which looks forged. Um, the reason I had to call him was because I actually had a question about these fancy little things right here. These are called the compression rings. So. There's two different color compression rings. I don't know if you can see it in there. One is a reddish color and one is silver. And he let me know that the, the brighter colored one or the silver one is the top compression ring and the darker one is the lower compression ring. They also have a mark on them, which is a tiny little letter T, which stands for top. It has to be top facing. So I don't know if we can focus on that. Yeah, probably not. So there's a little T on there. So they have to be facing upward and the shiny one is the top ring so we have our oil scavenger ring which is two separate ones I don't see any markings on them so I think they can go on anyway I don't want to scratch this piston but I do not have a fancy tool to install this uh, ring set so I'm just gonna go the old school hack way of doing it mess up. Now the ring gaps have to be clocked so that you don't mess them up. Okay, so now I've got the piston. I put one clip in already because I don't want to fight it around the piston rings and stuff like that. And I got the oil scavenger ring, or the squiggly ring some people call it, GD. And um, it's two little small scavenger rings which there's a gap here and I clock the other one over here. So next up is the compression rings. So I gotta be careful with these. You don't wanna bend them or tweak them. And I gotta make sure the letter T is facing the top and the darker compression ring is on the bottom. So that's gonna start here. I'm just gonna carefully get it started around the piston without opening it up too much. And I have to make sure that the gaps are different all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna clock that one about 45 degrees away. Probably, there's a gap. There's a gap. Yeah, so I'm good right around there. So, JD told me the easiest way to recognize which way one of these pistons goes on the engine is to look at the reliefs. You don't go by the little arrow that they point because you don't know if they're clocking it to the exhaust or intake. Every manufacturer is different. And I learned today that obviously your intake valve and your exhaust valves are different sizes. So, look at the reliefs cut in the top of the piston. The larger relief is clearly the intake. So. I'm gonna dab a little oil on this thing. 
and then we're gonna uh, slide the wrist pin in down there. Pretty cool. Go get my Jesus clip and get this puppy back together. Next, we're gonna slide the piston. Uh, we're gonna slide the cylinder. In. Goes. Piston is in. Don't have any slop left or right, so there's no wrist pin slop, no slack. It is tight. Now, before I slide the cylinder in, I just check my gaps again. Make sure all my piston rings are clocked properly. I'm gonna put a little oil in the cylinder and we're gonna go. So before I install the cylinder, I'm gonna back this out a little bit. So this is the new Nar uh, Naraku cylinder. It's a little bit bigger, slightly bigger. It's the 155 kit. Really, really clean, gorgeous sleeve. All of the surfaces are like just perfectly smooth. I'm really impressed. They have the fins angled a little differently than the stock cylinder. And I'll show you side by side what they look like. So clearly, they're taking into account the cooling efficiency. The, the actual fins are larger. And hoping the plastic still fit around it, but... I mean, you can see a difference right away. So, just a beautiful looking kit. Ugh. The fun part is getting the timing chain back in. And then my dowel pins came out. Alright, so, cylinder is in, timing chain guides and chain are lined up, the cylinder and everything, the engine is set at top dead center. I can now put my dowel pins in and line up the head gasket and cylinder head, so. This is the cylinder head. Now this cylinder head is way cooler than the stock cylinder head in that they've already machined the intake port and the exhaust port to match the size of the components that you're installing, like a 30 millimeter intake or stuff like that. So it is way, way bigger than stock. Also, like I said, um, a lot of clean machining. So we know where the top of this cylinder is. There's your intake valve, there's your exhaust valve. That's my intake port. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the chain lined up. I'm gonna insert my two dowel pins on the engine and make sure they line up properly. One, two, okay. Insert my head gasket. Got a brand new steel head gasket. Gotta make sure we put it in the right direction. How do you know if it's in the right direction? It's got different size holes to line up with your dowel pins. Okay. 
and then we slide this baby on. Clean. She is clean. <laughs> I like her. This fancy guy right here. Here's my new A13 Hoka cam. Look on the back there, it says boom, A13, yeah. All right, we're gonna see how this bad boy uh, acts up. Now, before I install this, I'm gonna lubricate the bearings with a little bit of oil. Right there, I'm gonna lubricate the bearings with a little oil. This is the camshaft gonna sit right on top of the head because it's an overhead cam engine and what I'm gonna do is set the timing at the top dead center and then put it on the chain and set it in place but before I do that I am gonna relieve my um, rocker arm assembly meaning I'm gonna take the lash out I'm gonna back these adjusters off to make sure that it's not putting pressure on the cam before we even get started so to do that Grab a socket. Okay. So I've got them backed out all the way. Now these also had dowel pins. So I have to make sure that I remove them from the old cylinder head and put them in the new one. Now this is also labeled intake and exhaust, so there's a very specific way this has to go in. And the dowel pins only fit in two slots. So I'm gonna set them in, lubricate this cam. Got the cam lubed up. Bearings are spinning perfect. This is the fun part. I'm using straight 30 weight oil to lubricate the parts as I'm putting it together. I'll probably be running a 10W40 in there, but to break it in, um, I'm gonna just use straight 30. So now, I know the engine's at top dead center. So what I have to do is line this up so that the cam is at top dead center. Now there's a large hole, and that's supposed to be at 12 o'clock on the cylinder head, so it'll be facing directly out, and these two holes have to be lined up with the cylinder head. So, test fit, fits beautiful, and that's how it's gonna look when it's in. So let's try. Tight fit. And that is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Whew. Now we line up a rocker arm assembly. I do not have a torque wrench with me here at the house. I used to, I can't find it. Moved a couple of times. So, I'm not gonna run these in ridiculous, but I am gonna tighten them down and set them. So, I'm using a quarter inch electric ratchet just to get them snug. And then from there, I'll go to a 3 8 regular hand ratchet and snug them up by hand. So everything is set, nothing's moving yet. I'll look up the torque specs and see if I can borrow a torque wrench from my coworker. But for right now, that's our assembly. The cam is in, it's at top dead center. You can see from the side, that is like lined up perfect. My lash is not adjusted yet. 
so I've got no pressure on the valves yet. The gaskets are all in properly. And there you go. That is the top end of an engine, a GY6 150cc, which is now a 155, 58 millimeter kit done. Okay. Oh, so I'll get the torque specs, I'll get this all tightened up, and then I'll do a finish build video of putting the timing chain tensioner in, and putting all the plastics back on, and then onto the CVT. Thanks for watching.